Let's talk about the day that I released Muka Clack for the first time. Sounds like a wasp nest. Probably is a wasp nest. I just picked up the camera in amazement. Like, this is the first one I've seen in months over here. I did they like the flowers of this palm tree or well, we have a wasp nest inside. So we'll see how that develops, but um, it is an interesting segue to my subject because when I started releasing Yukai Plek, it felt like I jumped into a hornet's nest and opened two at the same time. It was pretty intense and it got to points where it got so intense that I was questioning what on earth is happening to me. But before we get into all of that, let's do a workout. Alright, so today we're doing a pull day, which basically means that we do every single muscle that pulls. So to give you an illustration, the biceps, the back, the back of the legs, anything that pulls basically. And then the other day I do a push, so everything that pushes, your legs and everything. So basically that, and I switch and alternate between these two, it's pretty fun actually. Manly. That's one of the nastiest exercises that I know of. Turn your biceps and board. All right, that's the workout done. Let's eat. Hello, Rex. Meal number one, watermelon pizza. Or something like that. That's one loud bug, yo. Anyway, back to opening up hornet's nests. These rocks are hot, man. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Alright, back to the chair. It's better here. My feet don't burn. So, that time though, when I started to release mucoid plaque was around day 40. From that point onwards, very strange things started to come out of me. And I mean, at first they were diverticulite. Little lumps, little things with grooves, and I was like, oh, okay, hey, hello. I've never seen that before, right? And then, more things started to come. Now, before that, I had formed things, but they were more fresh, I suppose. And... Um, the things that started coming out of me gave me severe stomach aches, like very bad. Like I felt it turning and churning there. Like it almost was like a burning sensation, like a, a throbbing sensation of pain and heat and nasty things came out and I could feel them slowly but surely making their way out of me. Like I could feel where in my colon they were moving and oh, it was painful. And they came with these very intense and deliberate emotions and memories and I started noticing in my first line juicers that they were linked and I've seen that since with all of my clients like they have the same thing but when this stuff comes out it made me sick sick to points where I hadn't been sick before and then when it would come out I would feel so much better but the smell man <laughs> so bad man so bad so it was intense sometimes I needed to put a water bottle on my stomach because I couldn't handle it and I have a pretty high pain tolerance so it was intense and this basically went on from around a little over day 40 to day 108. The last thing I had and the last time I had a movement. Oh boy. Sophie's sunglasses look really good on me. So the last time on day 108 that I had something that came out of me. It was one of the most intense ones. And I still remember it like I instantly put my hand here. <laughs> Uh, that night I was at a friend's house. I didn't have anything with me, so I couldn't record it. And I actually recorded every single thing that came out of me during my juice fest. I wrote everything down, but also made pictures and took videos. You can see that in my 2019 juice fasting playlist. Links down below if you're interested. That thing that came out of me, like I had a stomach ache for two, three hours. I just felt it just rummaging through me. It was painful. And then I put a hot water bottle on me for hours. And then it finally came. And what came out of me, I didn't have gloves with me. Usually I would inspect everything. What came out of me was so dry and so rubbery and so sleek and 
all kinds of patterns and holes in it. Like, it was insane. I couldn't believe that had been in me after 108 days of juice, yeah? And I was drinking six to eight liters every single day. It smelled bad, it looked bad, it was horrible. And after that, it stopped. And every single piece of mucor plaque that came out of me made me feel horrible, disgusting, it smelled bad, but then afterwards it was fine again, and then the next piece came, and I just couldn't believe what was inside of me. And having coached dozens and dozens of people by now, like, it's amazing what's inside of us. And if you haven't checked it out, like, there's a lot of people, and I'll put some links below, that actually documented all of it and showing you what comes out. It's, it's insane, man. When you start passing mucoid plaque, <laughs> of course, there's people telling you, like, it's not true. <laughs> they haven't done it, man. They don't know. That's all right. When you start doing this, man, it's painful. And then you open your eyes, sort of. And you're like, wow, I need to get this stuff out of me. But here's the thing. When you drink enough juice, six to eight liters, your progress is gonna be a lot quicker than if you don't. So you put on your sunglasses of productivity. You just start drinking all those juices. And before you know it, you open your eyes to all kinds of nasty stuff coming out of you. Now, some people only drink three to four liters or maybe five at the most. They see less results than when you drink more. Now, let's say you drink four liters, you go to five, that's 25% more, right? Let's say you go to six, it's almost 50% more. You're gonna get so much more result from that. That's what I tell my clients. Everybody who goes in their juice fasting program with me, drinks six to eight liters, preferably not. If you get to five, fine, but preferably six, and then we go to eight, you're gonna get so much results so quick. That stuff is gonna blast out of you. Like, if I think about the fact that I drank six to eight liters, and I was usually around seven to eight, actually, if I drank only four liters, it would have taken me to what? Day 150, 180 to get all that stuff out of me, man. Just so drink enough juice. Now, if you have no clue, well, what should I do? How much? What should I... Links down below. Juice fasting blueprint. One page. Good to go. Complete guide to juice fasting. Everything I know about juicing. Just start doing it, man. It's amazing. And if you need help, come to me, man. But, you know, find people you resonate with. Get the information. <laughs> start pooping out the shit, man. Like, oh, it's, it's insane what's inside of us, man. It's insane. And this wasn't a one-time fluke, right? Like, I did this a couple times. I ate shit again, plucked myself up, I had diverticular holes, and I pooped it out again. But this time it was more fresh, wasn't painful to get out and whatever. It's inside of you. I'm telling you, now if you're like, ah, I'm skeptical, whatever, try one week, man. One little week. If you haven't eaten in one week and you're still pooping, then the light bulb goes out. Now, that's the position I was in, like, I was like, I want to try it, man, let's see if what John Rose says is true, right? That's how I discovered juicing, man. Yeah. After three to four days, I started passing stuff, and after, like, a couple of days, it was like, ooh, he's right, I want to go the distance. But it was painful, but worth it. All right, so we're in the hospital, or at least the emergency, whatever it is here. And we have to wait for Sophie to get her stitches out. She has like a couple stitches in her head. She hit her head really hard on a window. She actually had to get stitched up. All right, so we ended up waiting an hour, but tough luck, stitching couldn't come out. That's the thing in Spain, like if you make an appointment, you wait an hour, and then there's no guarantee that you'll get your appointment. You still maybe have to wait a little longer. Or you might need to come back on a different day. So we have to wait a little longer. Bummer, but we're good. I just love sunflowers, man. And they love me. Tripod fell over. That's okay, though. So, in order for you to prevent falling over your own feet in a juice fast and not getting the results you want, drink enough juice. And that's what I want you to take from this video. Like, if you're gonna do a juice fast or if you're doing a juice fast, drink enough juice and make sure you get it in every single day. That's the most important thing. The juice you drink will rehydrate the stuff in your colon and then we'll flush it out. Now, six to eight liters every single day, right? One and a half to two gallons, and you'll be good. Every single client of mine gets results with this way quicker than anybody that I talk to that does only four liters or three liters. If you do five, you're gonna be in between there, but six to eight, preferably. So keep that in mind. Again, if you have no clue, juice fasting blueprint down below, complete guide to juice fasting as well. If you need help, just hit me up. But whatever you do, drink enough juice, put a hot water bottle on your belly, and get all that junk out of you, man. I'll see you in the next one. Damn.
Those are some nice sunflowers. What's that? Huh? Drink six to eight liters of juice? All right. Let's do that. <laughs> 